Welcome back! Do you remember a few weeks ago when I assembled the parking brake components and thought all was well and then went to install the brake handle and found the cables were way too short? Yeah, well, that had to all come apart again. Fun stuff! As it turns out, the VW Beetle brake cable and the Porsche trailing arms don't fit very well together. So let me show you what we're talking about here and how I solved this one. It's kind of interesting and it may help someone else attempting this part swap someday. Well, here we have the set of trailing arms, just like the ones that are on Eleanor now. These are a slightly earlier year, but nonetheless, they are the same. What I didn't notice while looking at the underside of these trailing arms where the e-brake hole, where the e-brake cable goes into the hole right here, I discovered that they were just a little bit too small. Now, being that it was underneath, this is something that I would not have seen otherwise, except for when I started experimenting here on the bench with some additional parts, but you can see the cable does not go in there properly. And what that means is that the cable is now going to be just a little bit too short on the other end where this comes up into the car. And that's exactly the problem we're experiencing right now. So what I did was I took a rat tail file on this one here and just went ahead and gently filed it out. And I mean, not much. I took maybe a millimeter out the whole way around. Then this cable should go right into here. And it should seat correctly, just like that. It came through on the inside the way it's supposed to. And there is a like a 45 degree in there, and it looks like it's supposed to stop right at about that point, and it does. There's no retaining clip or anything on this, so I'm probably going to have to fabricate something. Maybe as simple as just putting a washer around it and tacking a couple welds on it to hold it in place. Or maybe making some kind of a bolt-on collar or something. That would be nice because that would give me some adjustability. At that point, I should gain a couple inches of cable out the other end on the car side because now I've actually shoved this down inside the arm. So that's what we're going to do today, and we're going to see if we can make that work. And if so, I may not have to change out that e-brake handle that I thought may have been the problem. So, well, I guess we're going to see. But before we get to anything else, let's have a moment for our sponsor. As you know, I'll be purchasing some land for shop space here in the very, very near future, but here in the States, that doesn't earn you any sort of title. So I thought I should get my lordship from established titles. Yes, according to historic Scottish custom, landowners can refer to themselves as lords and ladies. How about that? You can purchase a plot as small as one square foot of dedicated land and you will receive a certificate with a unique plot number so you can see its exact location. Get one for yourself or one of your loved ones this holiday season. It makes for a great gift and supports the environment as established titles will plant a tree to support global reforestation with charities such as Trees for the Future and One Tree Planted. Best of all, you can officially include the title Lord or Lady on your personal documentation where available. Some of you sharp-eyed people may have already noticed my name change here on YouTube. That's right, it's official. And this makes for a great last-minute gift. And Established Titles is running a massive Black Friday sale right now, so if you use the code DUCKMAN, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash DUCKMAN and get your titles right now to help support my YouTube channel and the environment. If you get yours right away, it's also nice to know that you'll be my neighbor as the first 200 purchasing will be next to or near my plot. So become a Lord or Lady today with an Established Titles title pack. So let's build a Duckman kingdom together. Special thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring this video. Right? Right? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Lord Duckman's Garage. Yes, that's right. Lord of my own domain. Anyways, we're back with Eleanor, and today we're trying to actually have a little success on this thing because, well, we're actually going to try to get something done here because we keep running into a whole bunch of roadblocks and failures and just a lot of problems along the way. And Eleanor here is exactly that. Um, she's just had nothing but problems along the way, but I mean, this is a custom build, and I get that. And without life's failures, I suppose you wouldn't have an opportunity to celebrate life's successes. So... I'm here today to try to get something to work, and I want to make the e-brake work. This is the handle that I painted up real nicely. It used to look like this. I mean, it looked terrible. But the big difference between these two, and you can see it right away, looking at the tail end of these here, you see how one is, uh, the black one that I painted here, it goes a little deeper into the tunnel than this one does, and I thought that maybe that had something to do with cable uh, length, and that this would require a longer cable because it's pushing the cable further away from the, uh, the mounting point, which is up on the top here. So we're going to evaluate that today, and once and for all, we're going to get this thing fixed. I really don't know what I'm going to run into on this thing. I mean, I just never know because it's mostly custom stuff, and this is something I didn't prepare for. This car has never had a parking brake as long as I've owned it, and I want to try to make that work today because I'm tired of sticking a block of wood underneath there. And when it comes time to finally drive this thing, 
I want to have these working because I don't know if the hydraulic brakes are going to work right. I mean, you know, one step at a time, guys. I need to have a backup so that way I can stop because I hate to tell Earl, um, I'm sorry we smashed up your entire paint job. Can you help me? <laughs> so anyways, as always, leaky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingo belly, and we'll be back right after the intro. Thanks for watching. These cables just seem a couple inches too short. And that would be why. So I got to looking at the two e-brake handles that I have here. And this one I know is OEM because you can see the Volkswagen stamping on it right there. So I threw this one on the wire wheel and I found that it's also got a Volkswagen stamping. I don't think the camera picks it up at all, but I can see it. Nonetheless, when we look at these two, even though they come off of similar cars, you can see that even though I have them lined up by the same pin, look at the bottom there. You see the scoop is just at a completely different length. Uh, it's almost a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little more than that, taller on the black one that's been painted over here. So I need to look at that and figure out why. Everything else looks, uh, you know, nearly the same size. I don't know why that would be different, and that could cause the cable to be pushed further down in the tunnel, thus shortening my cable even more. On the top side here, I do notice that the dick is broken off on this one. It's not anything that I can't fix with the welder, but this one still has it. So I'd like to be able to use the black one if I can. So we're going to see what happens because this one, well, it used to look like this, just as rusty. But I cleaned it up and it looked fantastic. It got it repainted. I mean, it's like new. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to use this one. Anyway, that's the goal here. Well, I wish I handled all this before the fenders went on, but just gotta bear with myself and deal with what I did. Anyway, there's the e-brake cable, and I always thought it was oddly dangly. It just seemed like it was just not right. The reason why is because that cable doesn't go in the way it needs to. So I need to take that cable out, which means all this has to come apart again. Yay me! Guess we'll start with that, right? <laughs> Boy, oh boy, I wish them fenders were not on here. That would make life a whole lot easier. All right, gotta take the brake line off first. Good news is all that stuff is brand new and stainless steel, so that's now out of the way. And I need to use the same size socket, if I remember correctly, it was on the lug nuts. Takes off this brake caliper. There's spacers behind this brake caliper too. I have to watch out when they fall out. There they go. Alright, good. Spacers are just washers by any other name. The Porsche, one, Porsche ones, however, blah 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 Porsche, are expensive. And they're measured very specifically to their thicknesses, but these are good enough. They just have to get in the ballpark because the caliper will self-center. Okay. Got an extra big ass Phillips head here. Hopefully these will come out without too much stress also. I got a feeling this uh, rotor's gonna get me trouble though. This rotor likes to stick on this hub. Yep. Whereas the other side comes off easy, this one's gonna be a battle. Alright, alright. Now these can be a little bit of a dick to get off of here. But the nice news is is there's little threaded holes on here, which are probably intended for these to be threaded in to pull the drum off. <laughs> that actually made it really easy. I got the rubber mallet out to beat it off and I didn't even have to do it. Nope. Well, good. All right, here is the e-brake apparatus that you guys watched me put together several weeks ago. Eh, it might have even been a couple months ago at this point. But the e-brake cable comes through underneath here to that little swan. 
can't even hardly see it. That's just the tail of it right there. I need to remove that so I can get the cable out. And once that cable's out, then we can get to filing. I was hoping I could file with the cable in place, but I got a feeling that as I'm filing, I'm probably just gonna scratch the cable, which is going to weaken it. Bad idea. Anyway, all right, we gotta take out these little spring clips, then the pad should come off, and then the whole mechanism underneath will probably fall out. In fact, I might even be able to just spread it out and uh, pull it out. <laughs> if that comes out by hand, that would make life a whole lot easier. We're gonna see if we can do this by just taking off one side. Since I'm right-handed, primarily right-handed, try on this side first. Alright, well, so far so good. Get this spring clip out of here. Hey, there it is. Then, uh, I probably should have done this first. This spring that's in here. Yeah, I should have done that first. Now I can get that out the way. All right, here comes our whole mechanism out the bottom. There it is. This little apparatus here, they were for a few people up on YouTube that were telling me that I'm missing pieces. There's nothing missing from this. There's a clip that's supposed to hold this all together. No, there isn't. <laughs> this is it. If you want to look it up, check out the exploded view yourself, you guys. That's actually the way it comes. The tension of the cable and the springs actually holds everything together, which is a little hokey because as you're assembling it, it wants to explode. But once it's together, it holds together quite well. Anyway, this is a uh, little swan that I mentioned. This is the cable hooks into the little head of it. And then it pulls which then the wing part here pushes on the brake pedal, or brake pedal, <laughs> pushes on the brake shoe, and this other side here pushes on the brake shoe, and you see how this point to this point expands. So it causes the shoes to go outwards. Anyway, that's all there is to that. Now the cable should come right out the bottom. Here it is. All right, I'm gonna get under there and start filing. I don't know if I need the camera for that. Be nice if I had the GoPro out today, but I don't have that charged up. But I don't think you guys need to see me running a file like this. Usually I charge people for going like this. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to bore you guys with it, but I will be boring this. <laughs> well, I'll be here a few minutes, so I'll let you know when I'm done. All right, I got a couple washers that will fit over the e-brake. And well, I tacked one on. I didn't do anything too fancy here. Just put a couple of welds on it. And it doesn't even matter if they're ugly or not. You're never really going to see them. But the fact is, I didn't want them to penetrate too deeply because if it gets hot, this is plastic wrapped cable. I don't need the wire getting welded to the inside of this thing, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the ground is wet because I kept a spray bottle over here and I just kept spraying it with water every time I would get it hot. So that way it wouldn't, um, wouldn't melt the shit out of the cable because it's kind of critical here. Anyway, this should push up into the area up in here. We're gonna shove it in there and see what happens next. I think that's about what we need it to be. That should gain us, oh, almost two and a half, three, well, let's say two and a half inches of cable length up inside the, uh, the cabin. So let's see what happens. All right, let's see how much of this I can get on camera. Put this up in the hole. This should fit in here now. There it goes. I want that 30 degree angle or so to go that ways. And if I did this right, this should go in there and there it goes and butt right up against that ugly friggin washer that I welded on there. Yeah, it feels solid. I think we're gonna be good in this department over here. Yeah, I think I'm satisfied with that. Okay, good. I guess next thing is to uh, hook the e-brake stuff back up here now that we have the cable coming back through. All right. Sheriff's office was over here serving papers and then they realized they were at the wrong address. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyways, back to work we go. Lost track of what I was doing because I got interrupted when uh, came around here, sniffed around for trouble. Oh, I remember. I was putting the, um, putting the old swan back in. 
This guy is a little tricky because mm, you can't really see nothing when you're working up here. How the hell did it go? But there it is. I'm using a file to dig the cable out. Not exactly the right tool. <laughs> All right, Swan. I'll try to hook that cable. Success. And then close this little guy up. Try to get it behind the brake shoe on the right side. And then move the pad out of the way. Wish I could show this to you guys. Oh, that went right in. All right, I guess I lucked out. All right, everything looks like it's supposed to be in there. The way it is, I had already put this clip back in just before when I was just test fitting stuff. So the shoes are back where they belong. So we're good in that department. Also, let's go have a look inside the car and see how long the cable is. Because that will tell us if we truly solve this problem. All right, I'm figuring that we should be about two inches longer or so. And yeah, that's about what we're looking at. Not bad. This is the one that has not been stretched yet or repositioned as I just settled them down. So anyway, that looks pretty good. This, I believe, should now engage with the uh, e-brake handle properly, whereas this one was just way too short. It didn't go anywhere near it. I'm just gonna just, um, guess I'll just check everything else, size it up and see how she looks, but uh, I think that's gonna work. Okay, I've got that e-brake handle back in here. Instead of using a stock pin, I actually just used a bolt. I'm going to shorten this bolt down because it's just entirely too long. But nonetheless, this makes it stable and makes it a lot easier to pull the handle out when it's time to adjust or replace a cable. And here's the new cable that we just put in. Make sure this handle's down all the way it is. And look at that. It's right in line with the, uh, well actually it's a little past that. It's about a quarter inch past the little dick here on the end and that's great because the little seesaw that goes across this allows me to put the nuts on the end of it, so this cable is now effectively long enough. This was the problem with the other one. You see? Way too short. Wasn't going to work. And it appears that this lever is going to work just fine because the cable is seated in it properly. Well, it was. <laughs> when I just demonstrated it uh, working, it actually was seated in there properly, so this lever should work just fine. I don't have to replace it with the other one. That's good. Now let's do the same thing to the other side, and then we're going to have some working e-brakes. Another thing that was an issue that's now resolved. See that cable dangling there? That is the e-brake cable on this side. Kind of affects ground clearance, and well, I can see that very easily getting snagged on something. Come around back on this side, and look at what I've done. Because now the cable's shorter, it took the natural route that's supposed to, through the little clip that's supposed to hold it and everything, back to where it needs to go. So no longer is it affecting ground clearance and no longer will it be an issue with snagging on anything under the car. Okay, this wheel's ready to go back together. All right, e-brake. Shoes are looking pretty good. I didn't get them greasy at all. Put our disc back on. Where is my rubber molotta? See? See? Molotta is missing. Come here, brother. Mi hermano is muy... This side is the only one that has trouble going on or off. It just sticks just a little bit. Just enough to make things frustrating. Not enough to actually be a problem, just enough to be annoying. All right, now we'll put our caliber back on. This part's gonna be tricky because I have to do it blindly. I can't get my head under there to have a look. Where these spacers were supposed to go. Alright, well. 
I guess we'll uh, kind of get them started here. I think I'm wasting my time, but <laughs> I guess we'll see what happens. All right, that's where they're supposed to go. Oh, on the first try, I did. Mo Foley, Molly Foley, what you did, man. I don't believe it, I caught them both on the same. I've never done that before, okay. And that's when I can even see it. Of course, right now I'm working blindly, I can't even see it. All right, well, that's good. Let's go ahead and get that sucker on there. Of course, I don't have my drill. All right. Needed a battery. Can't do nothing without no battery. Ah! Uh-oh. That's the wrong socket. <laughs> this is the correct socket. Damn it. What just happened? The whole damn thing fell apart. Yeah, you dickhole. Yeah, you make me angry, you bastard. Oh. Alright, good. We'll torque them down later. I know I'm going through all this again. Uh, upcoming date. Right now, I just want to see the e brakes working. Uh, Alright, put that brake line back in. Here we go. Alright, she's on. And then I see the line over here on the other end is loose. I never tightened that one up properly. It's a good thing I didn't try to bleed the brakes because I thought they were all in there right. No, they're not. Good job, dog man. Don't you know what the hell you're doing? No, I have no idea. This is my first time I've ever worked on a car in my life. You know, it's starting to look that way. <laughs> all right. But I do like custom stuff. Oh, yes. Here comes the ice cream man. Should I get ice cream? What do you think? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why is this resisting? <laughs> oh, because the rotor's not on all the way yet. When I bolt the wheel on, it'll pull it in. Now I gotta retighten these. All right, good. Wheel on next. Wheel. This poor powder coated wheel was like mint when I got it. The previous owner was kind of affluent. He had some good money and he just had them powder coated. They looked really good. He had them on his fairly new 911. It just happened. I see what happened. I didn't put the damn adapter on. <laughs> That's why my lug nut seems so damn long. Oh, duck man, you're a damn idiot. You built this car. You should know better. Got a spacer back on. The lug nuts. Gonna fit right. Everything will be sticking out all weird and shit. Oh, duck man. Oh. All 
right now we just have to tighten this up so that way we can get the uh, brake disc seated. I think that actually got it. I saw the whole thing move. I'm one nut short because it rolled away. I can see it right over there. screws can get tightened down properly. Actually that one's already tight. But this one isn't. Oh look. Alright. Now it's going. Here comes a bunch of screaming kids down the street making all kinds of noise. It's that time of day again where all the screaming kids get out and then they do crimes and stuff in the neighborhood. <laughs> and I already lost my socket. Or did somebody steal it? Maybe somebody was doing crimes in the neighborhood. Oh, well, I'll find it in a minute, I guess. I don't know what it was with those kids there. They were giving me weird looks and stuff. And then it turned out my socket was actually lost. They had rolled way down the driveway to where they were at the end of the sidewalk. I think they might have thought that I threw it at them. I don't quite know how it happened. <laughs> Probably when it went like that because it doesn't sit on there well. It's missing a little ball. So it probably went flying. Somehow it missed the Z because the Z is only about three feet away from me right there. All right, when we get it back down on the ground, we'll torque them down. But we're ready to do the other side. Hell yeah. All right, inside here now we should find both cables are nice and long, and indeed they are. Looks like they're about the same length too, so I guess my measurements were pretty good. You see how high they come up at this point? Something that they did not do before. Well, let's go ahead and assemble that painted e-brake handle in here, this guy, and let's see how everything fits. I got a feeling we're gonna give you some good news today, and if not, well, then I'm gonna edit the video so you guys don't see the bad stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna work to be honest with you. This bolt is what I'm using instead of the pin. This old pin that's in these things, I never favorite much. Helicopter flying over, wonderful. As soon as I record the video or something stupid happens like that, I apologize, you guys. I'm sorry, but you know, that's life. I'll always ask, hey, why do you put that music in the background of your videos? It's cover up stuff like that. As well as the obnoxious people across the street playing copyrighted music right now, so I can't run that stuff. Who knew? Alright, that should be like that. This bolt goes in here. I hope you guys can see this. Hey, this is that bolt I just put in instead of the pin. I don't like to pin with the clips because it's a real pain in the ass to loosen them, especially if they get any rust on them. So when it comes time that I have to replace one of these e-brake cables, it's nice just to undo a bolt, slide it out, pull the handle out, and the cables will be right there. No, you don't have to pull the handle out to, to uh, replace the cables. You really don't. But it's so much easier, especially when you have hands like this. You know, so to be able to get down in that hole and pull it up makes all the difference in the world. Okay. Right. Here's the one, and these are the correct nuts that go on the little teeter-totter that's on the top here, that little seesaw. Boy, that kid's screaming. This little thing right here. These are OEM parts, so I'm going to put the originals back on. These are from another car that was out in the yard. I cleaned everything up so everything is nice and neatly threaded. It shouldn't give me any weird issues while I'm assembling it here. You gotta be careful about fumbling these too because you'll drop them down in a tunnel. Ask me how I know. All right, there's one cable. This should go up and over the top of the little dick that's on there. All right, good. This is coming together already. Very nice. 
just have to make sure that the other cable is down underneath that e-brake handle the way it's supposed to be. And it looks like it is, at least from here anyway. I'm gonna have to check it with a flashlight just to make sure. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if I can actually snug this thing up with a little bit of power without the cable spinning around in the tunnel. Yeah, it's going, okay. There we go. And I can get the lock nut on top of it. These two nuts, you tighten them against each other so that way they don't back off. All right, wind this one in a little bit. All right, see how it feels. Actually, that feels like an e-brake. Yeah, I can actually feel the shoes starting to get pressure right about there. How many clicks is that? One, two, three, four, five, way too many. Yeah, right around between five and six. I did feel the shoes just seat themselves, so now I'm gonna have to go in the back and adjust the, uh, the shoes a little bit. I mean, I probably could just bullshit it and tighten the cable, but that's a no-no because down the road someday, you're gonna have to tighten the cable, and if you tighten it now, you won't have any more give in the back later. So I'll do is I'll adjust it in the back, make the shoes just a little bit tighter, and then uh, I think we'll be good from here on. But I think this is gonna work. Looking down in the tunnel there, it looks like everything's working the way it's supposed to also. The cable is going where it's supposed to be. I need to get a, a nylon lock nut for that. Well, I suppose now that it's in position, let's try taking out that block of wood and see if the tires actually lock up. I guess we're about to see. I'm skeeching the car here and I don't know, it doesn't feel like they're locked up to me. Yeah, that tire is dirty. I guess we'll see. I don't remember it being like that at the show. Anyway, this block of wood that's under here. Oh, it's out and the car ain't rolling. It looks like the brake on this side may not be biting as tight as the one on the other side. Because, oh, you know what? They're not biting tight on either side. <laughs> I better leave that block of wood under there. But I'm going to have to tighten up them shoes for sure. But anyway, we now have an e-brake and it is currently working. How about that? Yeah, just gotta make an adjustment. Adjustment's simple. Just like adjusting the drum brakes on a Beetle. We're gonna pop the wheel off. There's a little hole in the inside of the drum and we'll turn the little star on the inside. All right, as we know, the adjuster star is up on the top here using my trusty butt holoscope. Looking in there, you can see the old trusty star adjuster. That's right, now I'm gonna have to open that up, which means I'm going to have to wind it upwards. Because winding it upwards tightens the star and then lengthens that dick that's sticking out the right hand side there. Uh, actually, it lengthens the entire bullet that it's sitting in, but uh, yeah. So that's what we need to do. So let's see if I can, maybe with the camera in there. Yeah, that feels like it. Boy, imagine the old days when people had to do this stuff without these wonderful tools. Alright. Oh, you know what? That might be a little too tight. <laughs> but that's okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull up on that handle a couple times, and that will cause the uh, pads to, uh, well, shoes, to adjust themselves vertically and center themselves properly. And then what we'll do is we'll let off the e-brake again, come back here and adjust it again. Same thing as you do when you do your drum brakes on a car. You get up there and you pump the brake a couple times. In this case, it's mechanical instead of hydraulic, but you guys catch the drift. But we're almost there. All right, that should loosen up when I pull that e-brake handle. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much all there is to it here. Now well, we're spinning freely, we're good. E-brake is currently off. I'm gonna put the wheel back on, do the same thing on the other side. And then we can adjust the cable if we need to, but uh, I think we're gonna be good from here out. All right, before it gets dark, I need to check this. And I believe the instructions say it should be fully tight by three clicks. One, two, three, and yeah, it's got way more to go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, right around nine, I'm starting to feel it bite. Yep, rocking the car, I can feel it. 10, it's on pretty good. 11, yeah, now it's on there. So anyway, it's way too loose. We gotta tighten up these uh, little nuts here. Typically, you do that with a couple clicks down below. Get on here and turn these. Now, these are all cleaned up, brand new. What the hell's going on here? 
all cleaned up new nuts so I should be able to yep the cables not spinning around that's good and this little seesaw that's on here this little balance beam should be pretty evenly adjusted two three I think I feel it starting to bite right about there. Four, it's on. Five, I think I need just a little bit more. Yeah, this little seesaw that's on here, this needs to be evenly adjusted from left to right. Looks like I'm a little high here on the left side. Let's see how we feel on the e-brake handle. One, two, I start to feel it pinch. Oops. Try that again. One, nothing. Two, little something. Three, it's on there pretty good. Four, now we got a bite. That's pretty good. Usually between three and four is about where I want it. The instruction manual might say otherwise. This balance beam is not completely and adequately adjusted though because this side's a little bit high. I'm gonna tighten this down just a little bit. That'll probably get us even. That still looks a little bit high. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Two, still pretty good. Three, biting. Four, it's on. Five, I mean, that's like locked. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, that's where it's gonna be. Now to lock these things down, typically I just put a little wrench under here and then using the impact, I don't know if I can do this with one hand holding the camera like this, but it will. Yeah, I guess I can because it hit my leg. That's it. Now it's tight. Let go. I'll do the same thing on that one. That's it. And now it's ready for that boot to go on. Let go. Let go of my wrench. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess the real truth now is to uh, pull that up. And let's kick the log out from behind the wheel and see if she rolls away. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Car's not going anywhere. And that's it. The log is out. Nothing under that wheel. Nothing under that wheel. Make sure we don't have anything over here. I don't think I have any chocks under there. Nope, nothing there. Nothing up there. Okay, Eleanor now effectively has working e-brake. It's about damn time. <laughs> One more thing to cross off the list, and that was important, and it was driving me nuts that I didn't have it because my driveway is not flat. It's pretty damn steep, so Eleanor likes to roll backwards. And now Eleanor can stop herself from rolling backwards. One step in the right direction. All right, all right, well, excellent. Wrapping up another video. And I gotta say that uh, that e-brake to me was a really big deal. This car Never had a working e-brake on it. I mean, even when I first brought Eleanor home, but that's a different story altogether because three or four wheels were locked up anyway from having sat under seawater for several days, I believe it was, and then left outside in the rain for something like 10 years afterwards. Right, Cheeky? Cheeky's out here chilling with me. We were going to uh, pour us a blue cup and have a couple drinks tonight, uh, a little celebration for Eleanor's brakes working, but I realized how late it is when Everybody's lights started coming on in their houses, and it just occurred to me, the sun will be down in 30 minutes. Now, I don't realize that I put that much time into this car, but the fact that it gets dark so early is really throwing off my rhythm. I mean, it's really throwing off my rhythm. And I got a lot of sponsored videos coming up this month also. Uh, you'll be seeing that on the video, and of course it's going to be people complaining, but you know, nobody wants to see Duckman earn a living. I'm trying to pay to live my life. <laughs> and nobody wants me to earn a living, so they're gonna, oh, Dark Man, you should. Do. Shut up, okay? I'm enjoying my life, and I'm gonna do things the way that I do them, right, Cheeky? Right, Cheeky? You're a good baby. You're such a sweetheart. <laughs> if you didn't see the video over on the other channel on Monday, yep, Cheeky is two months old. That's right. On the 19th, you turned two months old. Yeah, you're getting so big. You're getting so big, and you're such a sweetheart. Last night she discovered my um, Reese's peanut butter cup. She started digging the peanut butter out of the inside of it. Right, Cheeky? <laughs> I had to take it away from her. She was gonna eat the whole damn thing. Didn't care so much for the chocolate, she avoided that, but she did go straight for the peanut butter. Anyways, 
I guess that's it. We're going to jump into the next thing uh, probably as soon as tomorrow. i got to start uploading a lot more videos because, as I said, I have so many holiday season sponsors coming up that I might need to put up two, three, four videos a week. <coughs> so, you know what happens then. It's going to be quantity over quality. I'm really not going to complain too much, but that means you guys got a lot more to watch. So, once we get through the holiday season, well, then I'll have enough money to pay my taxes for the beginning of next year. Yay! Just what I always wanted to do, work my ass off for the government. Anyway, that's a story for a <laughs> another video entirely and not for this YouTube channel. So, don't forget to licky, likey, comment, and subscribe, and plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out thugshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back, hopefully, in another couple days with another exciting video. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Right? Yeah. Good baby. Mm -hmm. You're a good baby girl. My little lap bird. My little lap bird. Yes, you are. Can you say hi to everybody? Can you say hi? Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs>